CataractCoach.com, cataract surgery and phacic IOL removal. This is removal of the PRL, the phacic refractive lens. We've shown you videos in the past for removal of the ICL. This is the PRL, a different brand name of lens that was used many years ago. And this is a minus power lens used to treat myopia. And it's placed there in the sulcus in front of the human crystalline lens. So you're starting off here, putting some anesthetic in the eye, fixating the eye. Here comes the main incision. You're probably not going to be able to open that old incision because this surgery was likely done at least 10 years ago, maybe even 20 years ago. So there's the lens. Dispersive viscoelastic is your friend here. You can get underneath this lens, which is much thinner than a typical pseudophagic IOL. And you want to inject viscoelastic underneath here. That's a dispersive agent as you lift the lens up into the AC. Now, this lens is very flexible and fragile, and um, you can tear it, but it's flexible enough too and very thin that you can actually pull it out of the eye. So you want to get some good forceps that have a grip on them, and usually that means serrated, but you can use a straight one here too if you want, or smooth one. Get across it as much as you can, and it'll fold on itself. Now, I like to rotate the lens 90 degrees from that angle, and that 90 degree angle lets me get it out through uh, the incision with a little bit less force. There it goes. It's gone now. Now it's just time for the cataract surgery, which should be relatively straightforward. Let's talk about lens calcs. How would you do the IOL calculations in someone with a phacic IOL? Well, remember, you're measuring, in these cases, optical coherence biometry, right? You're measuring the axial length and the AC depth with an optical method. And these are your common machines that you have in your clinic. Your um, IOL master, your lens star, things of these nature. So those are measuring right through the phacic IOL. So you're going to have an accurate measurement of the axial length, and you'll actually have accurate corneal measurements. So you actually don't need to account for the phacic IOL in terms of lens calculations. Now, I would certainly, for a patient who's this myopic, if you're putting a monofocal lens in, aim for some degree of myopia. So it can, if the patient wants great distance vision, maybe aim for minus a half. If the patient wants more functional you know, reading or intermediate vision, more like minus two. And you can see the patient had some dense, denser central endonucleus, but the rest of the epinuclear shell is pretty soft. In fact, you can get that out with just using a, here's some BSS on a cannula, and you can probably just wash that out of the eye or use the IA probe. It should wash out pretty easily. So, okay, more, high, more dissection there. That looks great. I like how the limbal vessels were nicked. That's going to allow it to really seal up beautifully. And now removing that cortex, very nice. And getting that out 360. Let's see what the lens choice is. I'm watching the video for the first time with you. I did speed the video up though to two times normal speed because I know the attention span of ophthalmologists. And we like things quick, quick, quick. So there we go, taking out the cortex. And you can see by looking at this eye, a big white to white measurement and look almost a reverse pupillary block that LIDRS, L I D R S lens, iris, diaphragm, retropulsion syndrome, very deepening of the AC. And that's because the iris is pushed up against the lens capsule. So more viscoelastic looks like going inside the eye now. Some sub-incisional material by manual eye can help get that out or put the lens in first. And let's see, here's our lens. Looks like a single piece acrylic lens and a monofocal lens probably. And get that in the capsule bag, get that rotated. And now, nice, the surgeon's using that lens to help loosen up that sub-incisional cortical material. Get that lens centered. Oh, nice looking rexus too. Look at the overlap. Beautiful. Let's take out the cortex from the sub area and finish this case up. Be careful in eyes, especially young males who have um, cataract surgery when they don't have a PVD yet, a posterior vitreous detachment, because they may be at high risk for retinal attachment. So patients like this, I actually like them to see a retina specialist before I do the cataract surgery. And then a month or so after the cataract surgery, they need to see the retina specialist again because, you know, you're replacing that thick human lens with this thin IOL. You get shift of the vitreous, and there can be some tugging or traction on the retinal periphery. And if there is a weak spot there, it could result in a break. And so better safe than sorry, send the patient to your retina specialist, and they'll help out as well. Beautiful case. Let's set up that lens and call this a day. Thank you for watching.